and I'm just gonna wipe the cobwebs off here because you can see those in the camera. Yo, what up and welcome to the cupboard. It's been a minute still, hasn't it? But I'm back. We've got the D-Link wire-free camera system here. So let's take a look. Just really, really quickly want to go over what's over the box here. 100% wireless free, full HD, motion detection, cloud recording, but you can do it locally if you don't want the cloud option. Indoor, outdoor use. You can't submerge it, but it's water resistant at IP65 rating and a long lasting battery, which I reckon you can get around six months worth of use out of a single charge, which is absolutely awesome if they can pull that off. Going around the product quickly, you can pause that if you want, but we'll have a look at what's actually in the box in a second. So you've got some more details along the back here, just what we've gone over, but you get a siren here, that's worth mentioning. So you can set that off if some of the motion detection is activated or even manually maybe. Up to four cameras can be used or with a hub and you'll notice this is the hub and you get two cameras with it. So let's have a look. Here we go is gonna come straight off. Nothing along the inside there, so we'll take that off. And here we go. We've got the hub here, and these fellas look like they're already alive. So let's take out the hub first of all, have a quick look at this. And you can see down here, you've got obviously the serial numbers and whatnot there. You've got the reset button, the LAN ethernet port. Now I believe this is a CAT5 ethernet port which you plug into your network and you've got a USB lead here where you can plug it in a USB hard drive or something along those lines. You could plug in maybe a micro SD card adapter if you wanted to if you haven't got a hard drive. You've got a, a power cable there and a on and off switch right here. As you can see 12 volts input and you can see it's rated at 1.5 amps. Looks pretty cool. Plenty of plastic here. Let's take this off. This feels very nice in the hand. Kind of polished, but not quite glossy. I do like this a lot. So you've got the D-Link branding across the sides there. If we take the plastic off, oh yeah. So you've got the LEDs here. You've got, I believe that's a, a quarter inch sensor here, two megapixel full HD here and with 140 degrees of view. Along the back here, you, we've got a micro USB. Underneath you've got a screw hole where you can mount it. You've got the speaker here, so you can talk from your mobile devices or even through Alexa. And the other thing on the other side of this can hear you. This little hub has also got a little speaker here for that siren, which can go simultaneously in sync across all of the devices. You've got the sync button across the left hand side here. You've got the microphone along the top and you've got the, that's just the operation LED there. And you've got some infrared LEDs along the right hand side here as well. I love the way this has got this little rubber uh, section across the bottom here so it doesn't slide around if you're gonna be using this indoors here. So I like that, I like that a lot. Nice and neat and tidy. Second one here, pretty much exactly the same as the first one. Now, if you need more than two, you can buy additional cameras here. Links as ever will be down in the description box below. I haven't been paid for this review, but thanks to Annabelle from D-Link for sending this out to me. That's the gist of the hardware here. So let's see what else we get. Just some cardboard there and some more cardboard, some health and safety information which is very good if you're bored. And we've got some all important product quick installation card here, where it tells you to what you can download from the various stores. You've got the serial numbers, the Mac addresses here as well, because sometimes you can't get to the serial numbers. If you've got this perched up a tree, for example, and you need to know what the serial number is, you can't always get up there. So. I like this little touch from D-Link, just providing you with a card with those details that you can keep indoors easy to get out when you need it. Now, let's have a look here, more cellar type. Let's uh, get these out and see what we get, nothing else there. So first of all, you've got the mount, nice and rubbery here. You've got screw holes that you can mount onto a wall or in the promo video, some trees, indoors, outdoors, whatever if you want it up high. So obviously the kids can't just walk away with it and no intruder can just kind of knock it off the wall. So that's pretty good. 
obviously a two pin power adapter if you need it depending on where you're based and we've uh, got the power adapter here to charge the devices and plug in we've got another mount here for the second camera and we have a, another arm a mounting point where the cameras can be mounted onto if you need them so you can screw this onto a wall if need be and this screws into the bottom of the cameras that we've just seen so we'll leave that there we've got another power point here now this is for the hub and as i'm based in the uk we've got the three pin uk power adapter which just slides on and we've got some screws here for the wall mounts as well as a cat 5 ethernet cable to plug in the hub we'll plug in the hub first of all the brains of this operation here that does all the processing now this needs to be plugged into your wi-fi network as the cameras will be connected to the same network so i use these netgear orbis so i'm going to plug this in via the cat5 cable that was supplied to the orbi here so just plug that in and i'm plugging it into where it says ethernet so the other end of the cable that we've got here is going to be plugged into where it says LAN on the back of the hub here. So we're ready to rock. I'm not going to plug in any hard drive at the moment. So we'll leave that be. We'll plug in the power to where it says power as easy as that. And we'll plug this. Well, we will in a moment. So we need to add in the three pin power adapter to this thing because we're based in the UK and it should just slide on like slow. Turn it on and we should have some lights if I switch it on from the back here. Ta -da! We're just gonna let the lights settle down here so you can see it's got power and it's flashing for the internet there and it's amber for the cameras because there are no cameras connected to it at the moment. Just give you a little bit better view of those symbols here so we can get a view for what's going on. That looks to be connecting up to the internet. Whoopsie, nearly knocked over the camera. So if I go to my D-Link application here, now this is the very first time I'm going in. If you're not signed up, sign up. It just wants an email address and a password and a username. So here we go. Add a device for the first time use. So we'll go add device and scan the QR, QR? QR code uh, on the configuration card. Um, so we'll say yes, we do, and we'll just scan the back. And it should have picked that up. Make sure the power cable is plugged in and the device is connected to your router with a network cable. Wait for the LED to light green. Yes, it is. So we'll hit next. Check the LED on your device. Press next when it's lights green. It's green. So we'll hit next. Press the sync button on the camera until the LED turns solid green. So we haven't got the cameras here just yet. So I'll just grab one of these now and it's already on. So we'll press sync. So we'll hit next. And it's having a little bit of a think. So it can see device profile. Where is this? Is this in the living room? This is the little bit of a hub that it's picked up here. So can I take a photo with this actually? Oh, that'd be cool. So if we take a photo of this thing here, that looks cool. We'll hit okay. I like that you can take a photo where your device is. So we're gonna say, yeah, it's in the living room. We'll hit next and it says configuring. We should get a view of the floor here <laughs> as arm. Um, gonna keel over in a second so it says binding i'm presuming what's it doing is trying to bind the camera to the hub and we'll have to most likely do the same on the second camera as well so it says cameras paired with your hub two out of four only allow four what does it say only allow to pair four cameras is that correct wording i don't know but anyway you can use a maximum of four cameras i've got two cameras with this kit as you can see here, so we're gonna hit done. And it should, ooh, free one year premium cloud recording. With this plan, you can activate five cameras for 14 day recording. Yeah, why not, why not? I'm gonna do this at some point anyway, so we'll activate now. And success, 
your complementary plan is active plan end date is 2019 we'll hit got it do you want to activate cloud recording on your cameras um yeah because i haven't got local recording but we'll have a look at that a little bit later on activate camera your subscription is active you can select compatible cameras below to enable cloud recording so if we do this one oh sorry there's got a tick next to both of them so we're happy with that we'll hit the tick to say both of them are active enable recording your new automation rule has been created to automatically record video clips to your cloud storage whenever your camera detects motion or sound the video will automatically be re recorded you can access the video clips at any time by going to events to change the rule simply go to automation to adjust the settings seems straightforward doesn't it we'll hit the tick in the corner and is that it is that going to give me a view of one of the cameras tap to play live view so let's see what this thing sees if you can see the battery there it's saying oh it's the one on top of the dining room table and it's a little bit dark we're here in the uk so it's not exactly going to be uh vegas now is it <laughs> but you can see that particular camera has got full battery it's got a good wi-fi and it's connected to the cloud as per the symbols in the corner now if i switch to this one will it show me the floor will it show me the floor yes it does it shows me the floor and here i am will it see there you go you can see my my hand there underneath the dining room table again we get the same thing wi-fi full battery and cloud storage how easy was that now i'm going to position these things where i want them so over the course of the next couple of weeks or so i'm going to move these around inside and outside uh, within the home see what we can see i'm just going to take the second camera here and just leave it it's got a rubber bottom there so it's not going to slip and slide a hell of a lot we'll see how it gets on in the hallway here so if i just bring up my phone and bring up the app here tap to view live minutes it should connect up and give us a preview of the back of my phone how awesome is that now here's the actual footage from the camera now my hallway is pretty dark not a lot of natural light coming in here but it looks okay now in the video clip that was motion sensed and recorded here you'll notice my son was coming down the stairs and it actually started recording when he was nearly at the bottom of the stairs and as night vision is set to automatic and the area is pretty dark it switched over the second camera i'm going to use the bracket here supplied to put it in the corner of the garden here on the top of this post. Now that that's on, I can push the front of the bracket on here. You can see how it's going to go. It's just going to slide on. Now all we need is the camera itself. Got to keep an eye on my son to make sure he's doing his chores. The quality of the footage looks awesome. And I'm going to shut up in just one second, just so that you can get a feel for what the microphone actually picks up. As I say, I've got night vision set to automatic and it's picked up a cat or a fox or whatever this is out in the night. Open the door, Dave. Walking around the D-Link application, this is essentially a single pane of glass into all your My D-Link devices. So whether it be your cameras, uh, smart plugs or sensors, anything D-Link that you may have, this is a single pane of glass once they're connected. Now you'll notice I've got one of the cameras on my desk here because this is currently being charged. And we'll get to this in a second. So first off, you're straight into the dashboard uh, here and you can tailor make this to what you want to see so if we go into the settings you can if you don't want to see one camera but you want to see other ones you can just simply untick them if you want one to appear above the other one you can do that as well it's fairly straightforward and very intuitive to do which is really cool now 
there is a couple of things here that are duplicated in terms of how you can get to certain settings. So you've got your standard dashboard here, you've got this little ribbon across the bottom where you can get to these settings and settings, and you've got this tab along the left hand side. Now, I would like for there to be only one way where you could get to those particular sets of information. So it makes it a lot cleaner for the application and a lot easier for the user. So hopefully D-Link can fix that with a software update. But nonetheless, I suppose, is it a bad thing having more ways to get to the same types of information? In my personal opinion, it leads to reputation. So repetition. So I would like to get rid of additional shortcuts that just aren't needed. So first of all, you can see camera two is connected here. And if I tap on it for a live preview, it'll connect up here. Now you can see it's got weak Wi-Fi. It's got full battery and it's uh, currently recording to the cloud storage option. Just because you tap on live preview, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna record that particular section to cloud. All this does is start streaming from there to your device to give you an idea of what it can see. Same goes for the other camera. And you've got shortcuts here that you can tailor for jumping into video recording timelines, uh, uh, setting off a siren, and one tap for automated tasks that you wanna do. And we'll get to those in a second. So we're gonna jump into devices first of all, and this gives you the same slides as you've got here. So you've got devices, one tap, events and video and settings. So if you go back, you get the same down here, devices, one tap, events and video and settings. So we're gonna jump into devices and cameras first of all, so we can get a feel for what's going on. And I like this little wheel that you can scrub through and get to your devices. It gives you a little bit more information than what's on the dashboard, some model numbers, stuff like that. But you've got the storage options here being the first through three, 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 three blue circles here. So you've got cloud storage, which I'm using here, and this will give you a timeline of what your camera picked up in terms of motion detection, when it picked it up and what that looks like. So this picked it up on the 31st of October, it says there. So if I scrub through uh, some of the footage, I beg your pardon, it's got the 4th of November selected there. So if I scrub through and select 10.54 uh, AM and it says you got a motion event and it starts playing that footage and it's 16 seconds long. I believe the longest uh, motion setting recording that I've seen is 27 seconds. And if the motion is still carrying on after that period, it just records another clip, uh, which is pretty cool. It's clever enough to know, okay, that's, that motion has finished, so I don't need to record a longer clip. But 27 seconds is the longest clip that I've seen. And if the motion is still ongoing, it'll record another clip uh, depending on the duration. So you've got the clip here itself that you can play. You can take individual screenshots of it. You can play it, pause it. You can download it or you can share it out to social media from those options there. And you've got the days that you can scroll through as well. You can see for a couple of days they run out of battery and I couldn't be bothered to charge it. So let's go back here into uh, the devices. And from if I click on this, which is SD card, there's nothing there because I'm not recording anything to SD card. For hard drive, again, nothing there because I'm not recording the hard drive. So if you choose any of those options when you're setting it up, obviously you'll have video up here there. So if you jump into the settings, you can see the device name, the location, you can change those depending on where you wanna put your device. For the camera, you can change the mic microphone recording so it picks up audio as well uh, as the video. Uh, and if you don't want that, you can just turn it off. Now the motion setting. Now I found this, when I put this indoors and the kids were constantly setting this off, the motion setting I had to turn down. Also, when I put this outside in the garden, wind uh, here in the UK is very windy at the moment, um, is setting this thing off all the time. So by default, the motion detection was like 80% out of the box. I had to turn this down to around 30 to 35% when putting it in the garden so that I could keep more of the battery life because if it's constantly being set off, obviously it's gonna use more battery and it won't last as long. So do bear that in mind. So we're gonna jump back here into the settings for this particular camera. We've had a look at the motion settings. You can also set night vision to automatic or manually turn it on and off. Or you could use some of the if settings in terms of the automation and turn this on uh, when you get home or when it hits a certain time. I love the way it's quite flexible in that respect. 
that's pretty cool. And if you notice, it's a little bit of trial and error when you start recording. So if you notice any flickering in the footage, you can change the frequency there to help with the anti-flickering within the video. Now, privacy mode. This thing's got privacy mode turned on at the moment on my desk, which basically means if anyone tries to connect to this, I won't be able to see what's going on in front of this camera, which is pretty cool that you can do that. It doesn't switch it off, so I can charge it, but I can set privacy mode on so no one can connect and see what's going on. And for the ceiling mode, if you're going to perch these things up really high up, kind of flattens the image a little bit so it doesn't look more like a fisheye effect, uh, which is pretty cool. And you'll notice when this picks up motion, a green LED appears on the camera. So you can turn that off completely so the person on the other end of this camera doesn't know that it's recording by just turning off that LED. And you get some firmware information underneath there as well. Same goes for the other camera, but it would be good within this devices section that you could have the hub here as well. The hub seems to be separated out for some reason. So if we go back here, and you can get to your plugs, smart plugs if you have them, I don't. And you can get the hub within its own separate little config settings here. And you can kind of do the same thing, change the name, location, what type of storage it's using from here. So it's pretty nicely laid out and you can set off the siren manually and we'll get to that in a sec. Um, but it would be nice to put this in the same section as just devices, one wheel that you can scroll through them. I don't have any sensors, so there's nothing in there either. Now one tap is pretty cool. So if you're away from home and you just want one button to do a multitude of things like start recording if there's any motion being uh, sensed in front of these because I've recently started to not have these recording when I'm at home. It only, they only record when I'm out and about away from home. So when I press one button that can set off the cameras to look out for motion and then start recording if they need them. And when I come back home I can set off a home tab where they don't need to record again just to preserve uh, some of my Wi-Fi there in that respect because uh, if there's a lot of motion they'll obviously be using a lot of Wi-Fi and then using a lot of Wi-Fi then in turn means they're using a little bit of battery so it's a little bit of trial and error depending on what your actual needs are but you can do that from within this section and if I go to within away you can see that's automatically set up so it's uh, either i can tap from within here or i can do it from the panels on the dashboard here as well so you can set those up it, it's uh, just a couple of taps to set those no big issue at all if we scroll through you get events and video again a timeline of what your cameras can see and what they picked up i originally noticed though when uh, motion was being detected, it was recording on both the cameras. So if camera one picked up motion, both camera one and two would record what's in front of them, which was a bit weird, but you can change the, the filter. So if I go to filter up here, you can see motion and it sets off cameras one and two uh, from within this filter here. So what you can do is set up two filters, not just one. So if camera one picks up something, then it starts recording. And then another one for camera two, etc. So by default, it was set up to record on both cameras if either one of them sensed any motion. So do bear that in mind if you notice a lot of footage being recorded uh, on some cameras more than the others. Check out the filters, definitely. And from the settings here, again, some repetition, account information, what you set up initially, email addresses, such like devices. You've got only the home hub here, not the home hub, just the hub uh, from where you can change the name and such like. But again, it seems like repetition of information. Automation is, uh, again, something that you can set up with a uh, one tap here as well, where you can go uh, straight into video recording. And these are some of the, some of the rules here set up. So you can see, if we go to settings and go to, whoops, let's go back. Let's go into rule number one. So event, uh, rule number one, if motion is detected by uh, camera two or camera one, then it's gonna start recording. And it sends a push notification there as well. So you can change that camera two. If motion is detected by camera one, then it will start recording and send a push and notification. So. I think that first rule was setting off both cameras, so that's why I ended up with lots of footage. So do bear that in mind, make sure you tailor it for what you want it to do. And there's plenty of flexibility here 
so you can just remove what you don't need and just add what you need so if we go back here and settings and we're back around to device and then again some of this information that we've gone through this ribbon down here you can get to from within the panel along the left hand side the devices one tap events video that section there is entirely that ribbon there which is a bit weird because I'd want only one place to get to that information so hopefully dealing can get rid of some of that replication um, repetition rather and sort that out in terms of a software update now you can link up the Google Assistant to my dealing if we go through third-party integration you can go through here and it also talks about linking up other devices as well but I haven't got to the stage where I'm going to be using Google Assistant with this thing so I'm not sure if I've ever used that at all because I'm more about getting the good quality footage when I want it so not sure how Google Assistant can help me but I may do a future video on that if I decide to set that up but straight off the bat the app is fully fully featured maybe too fully featured would you say uh, if there's a multitude of ways to get to the same information do let me know in the comments section down below but definitely all my little niggles with this application can be sorted out via a software update but the footage produced is absolutely awesome i'm sitting down by the hub here we're going to get to see how loud this siren is it says are you sure you want to turn the alarm on this might get loud and possibly damage your hearing if you are too close we're going to hit okay i'm in the utility room and this camera one that i've got in here is not blaring out the siren from its speaker there's no siren coming out of the camera outside either so this siren that's currently going off here i'm just going to shut it down there we go this siren can only be heard from the hub itself so this hub needs to be in a place where you can actually hear it because you won't be able to hear it through the speakers of the cameras wherever you may have them situated the siren on its own would be kind of useless because you'd have to manually set it off but with the automation functionality you can set up routines and i've set one up here i think this is the one that i set up if i go into the settings here and then hit the plus symbol you can say on which event so if i say when motion is detected from camera one only say if that's by a door or something and i can set the alarm off and hit next and save that so with the automation functionality even when i'm not home that siren can be set off so if someone's left at home they know when that siren goes off someone's at the door but that's just an example on which you can use the automation coupled with the siren I think these cameras work pretty well considering they're quite small and you can mount them into places where sometimes you can't always get a hardwired camera to go. But with that being said, this swings on roundabouts. And with these, it's trying to maximize the battery life for as long as possible. When I had this mounted in the hallway, the kids were constantly trying to set it off so they could get themselves on camera. The battery life only lasted a couple of days. Although I did get plenty of footage of the kids in front of the camera. When I mounted it in the garden, the wind swaying the bushes and the trees constantly set this thing off. So again, only got a couple of days of battery life out of this thing, but I got quality footage of the wind swaying the trees and the bushes. So what I ended up doing was, and this involves a bit of trial and error, is turning down the motion sensitivity where sometimes you don't really care about slight movements where the bushes or the trees are moving in the wind. Um, if you're going to be mounting this out in the garden say and that extended the battery life pretty heavily because it's not always needed to record footage as well as that using the automation so only turning on and using the motion sensitivity when I'm not at home that particularly extends the life of the battery even further because it's not looking to notify you or record footage when you're at home and thirdly I think the the thing here is placement of these cameras so you're maximizing what they can see so not necessarily putting them in the hallway because family movements within the house would constantly set these things off anyway so maybe not a good place to put it maybe direct it at a particular doorway so it only uh, alerts you or record stuff when that doorway is being used but what i like about these is that they only record when they sense motion these do not continuously record footage all the time a because the battery life wouldn't last very long and secondly when i'm scrubbing through footage if i've got hours and hours of continuously 
recorded footage, it's gonna take me a long time to find what I want. This way, as they only record as and when they sense motion, I know I'm looking at quality content or content that has sensed some motion when it was recorded, saving me a little bit of time and knowing the fact that when I get a notification through or scrub through the timeline, those previews and events that have been recorded, that's been definitely when something has been sensed by the motion detectors. But ultimately, you've got two considerations to make. The first one, do you need motion detected video recording? The second one, do you have good Wi-Fi? Because whatever you decide to place these things, you need to have good Wi-Fi. So check out your Wi-Fi. Is it good? Use a Wi-Fi analyzer, maybe upgrade your access points or get a whole new mesh Wi-Fi system just to make sure you got good Wi-Fi for these Wi-Fi enabled wire free cameras. To sum up, pretty good. Plenty of functionality and automation within the application, although it could do with being a little bit more slicker and easier to use, but that can be fixed in a software update. In terms of performance, make sure you adjust the motion detection, trial and error as I say, and definitely use some of that automation to maximize the battery out of these little guys. Hit subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching, have a wicked day, and I'll see you next time.